hi there. Um, I just left off episode two talking about operators. Uh, now we're actually going to get down to like real programming uh, by talking about flow control structures. Um, flow control is basically the idea of controlling the program's natural flow. Remember I told you in the very beginning that programs execute line by line top to bottom until something happens. Um, usually that something is hitting the end of a function and then returning. Um, sometimes you want to direct that uh, control because um, remember the CPU can only do one thing at a time and you need to drive it like a car. Um, so I created two functions up here. I know we haven't really talked about functions that much but the idea is that generally functions are like little mini programs. They have inputs and outputs. The inputs which can be empty are in this argument list or arguments to the function. The outputs um, don't have to come this way but um, really they, they change the state of the computer or they change something that's an output but the most convenient way to get an output out of a function is a return value which is a single variable return type and functions will execute top to bottom until they return their output. Like I said if a function returns void it returns by default uh, when it hits the end you don't even have to return anything. Um, this might actually clarify now you might understand hey look main returned something it returns an int. Um, well, back in the days when C was invented, um, programs were used on the console and you would actually run your program. Uh, this might be the old one that was. Uh, you'd run your program and then you'd actually want to see what the return value was of your program after the fact of after it running. And you could actually get that value out. Nowadays, it almost means nothing. Um, just return zero from main. It's almost like a legacy uh, of the old programming days. Um, you generally always want to just ignore it and return zero um, from main. But uh, other functions, the return value means a lot because you're the one using them and you're the one who cares. So I wrote two functions here that use everything we've learned thus far. They return an int, they take a new int, n is an argument, and then they use operators. Uh, they double this one by returning the value of the uh, input times two, and this one halves it by returning the value divided by two. Um, in computer science, multiplying by two and dividing by two, if it's integer, is one of the most efficient operations you can do. It has to do with the binary number system. Um, just a little trivia for you there. But um, we're going to talk about flow control structures. So suppose I declare an int, and I set it to two, and then I set it equal to I call to have it, and then I print it out. Result. I always forget this backslash n because I'm not used to C anymore. Uh, I'm going to run the program and it gets 1 because 2 divided by 2 is uh, 1. Suppose I make it something bigger like 100. God, I hate it when I do that. And I run it and I get 50. Um, let's have a little fun and make it like really friggin' big. Uh, so it's not that fun. Um, all right, so it works. However, suppose you want to like do something different uh, in your program and not just have it go top to bottom. That's where you get into flow control, and the most common flow control is if. Uh, it's an if statement or an if flow control. And basically what you do is you put if some truth value. If the truth value is true, it will run what's in the if block. So first time we have a block here that's not a function, this block um, We'll run if the if statement is true. So what do we say if? Well, how about if x is equal to 100? Um, yeah, so if x is equal to 100, half it. Um, I think you can guess what's going to happen here. It's going to half it because it is equal to 100. It did. Uh, what if x is equal to 101? It's not going to half it. If I rebuild the program, it won't. There it goes. So, yep, 100. Um, I left something out last time. Uh, there are other kinds of operators. I knew I was going to forget some, but they're only useful inside an if, at least most of the time. Uh, they're the equality operators. Um, there is double equals, greater than, or e um, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and then not equal to. Um, for example, if x is not 101, uh, double it. Good. Um, double. Um, this is important because everybody who's learned C at one point of their life has ruined their life and still <laughs> made the mistake of putting one equal and assigning it instead of actually seeing. And you get warnings 
by nice new compilers nowadays, but when I was growing up, I had to walk a mile uphill in the snow, and uh, this thing didn't warn me, and you would forget, and you would accidentally assign X to 101. And um, for reasons that are complicated, the, the assignments actually have a value where you can do X, something like that, and um, the result of an assignment is the number you assign it to. So it's basically like typing if 101, which is always true because it's not zero, and it'll run. So in this case, you screw up everything. You, 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 you assign your value of x, which you didn't mean to do, and you are true without realizing it. Now you end up getting half of 101. So let's make it like crazier. Like what if x is equal to 200? Keep forgetting the result. Now you get 100 because it accidentally assigned x to 200 and then it halved it. So always put 2 equals if you want to see if something's equal to something else. I harp on that a lot, but it's a really common mistake. Um, all right, so what about this? What if, if x is greater than 100, half it, so greater than or equal to? So there's that. Well, what if it's not? Um, that's where the else flow control comes in. So otherwise, um, how about we double it? Well, um, this is pretty boring because we're going to get the same result. I need to just put the word clear. All right, 50. So x is halved because it was greater than or equal to 100. Now what happens if x is not? What if it's, say, 50? Now it is not greater than or equal to 100. It should be doubled and become 100 if I'm not dumb. It is, it becomes 100. Um, this is cool, but let's make it even more complex. Um, let's talk about other flow control structures. And the most common one besides if is while. Um, I'm not going to go over all the flow control structures because some of them are kind of like duplicates and have different ways. And um, I might go over them to some other point in the future, just not during this lesson. So while. Um, while is the same thing. While a truth value, keep doing it in a loop. It's called a loop uh, until the truth value isn't true anymore. Um, one of the dumbest things you can do or funniest is just put while one or while true. Um, that makes the loop run forever and uh, it will freeze the program up, not the computer, just the program, until you end it and cancel out. Um, that doesn't make but, sense. But um, they're, they're interesting because you gotta think through them but not make examples up out of nothing. So while go, uh, while go is true on the loop. If I run this, it'll go forever. Unless I really am dumb, there it goes. Um, so here's an idea. Um, I got x less than 100, half it. Why don't I just keep halving x? Then about the if statements. And if x is less than 2, don't go anymore. End the loop. This is a more common way to think about loops, actually, that uh, easier on the mind, especially when you're dumb like me. There we go. So it keeps halving them. Um, remember, integers cannot be floats, so they cannot have 0.5s. So dividing 6 by 2 will give you 3, but dividing 3 by 2 will give you 1 uh, when you're working with an integer because it truncates the uh, 0.5 part. Um, so that's an example of uh, all the flow controls I've showed you thus far. Uh, keep halving the number. If it's less than 2, stop. If you don't do this, you'll probably get 0 forever. Uh, and your loop, yeah, that'll make no sense. Um, so that's one type or two types of flow control structures. There's also a do while. This is the one I was going to skip, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. Um, do it while is the same as while, the only difference is it goes into the loop once um, before. So it doesn't check the condition until the end of the loop instead of the, uh, instead of the beginning. Um, it essentially will, give, I think, give us the same result almost in this case. Yeah, except it doesn't, it stopped, it didn't print out zero because it stopped at the, uh, stopped here. Okay. So that's whiles and do whiles and stuff like that. Um, another common thing you'll want to do is you'll actually want to get more on time. Uh, you'll want to uh, do what's called a for loop. This is the one that took me the longest to understand when I was starting out. But the basic idea with a for loop is you want to count uh, to a certain number. So you'll do for the beginning value, the value to end, or the value that needs to remain true. So for example, uh, x needs to be less than 100 and then what you do to it uh, every time. And the most common thing is, is this. You'll start 
and you'll end and you'll just basically for every single number of x between 0 and 100. Uh, since this is less than, it won't go to 100, so we'll go to 99. So in this case, it'll count from 0 to 100, and you'll just get values of x. This is a very, very useful thing when you're dealing with uh, more complicated data structures, which I'm going to talk about next lesson, uh, namely arrays and structs and objects. Um, so I'm going to run this. So I'm not using go anymore. Uh, running this will give us... All values of x from 0 to 99. And you can go as high as you want. Computers are pretty fast these days. They can count pretty quickly. You'll actually find the printf makes it take longer than actually counting if you do a ton of them. Um, so yeah, you can add up numbers, do everything you want. If you want to skip, you can do plus equals. So maybe count by fives. Common thing to do, maybe. So there it goes, every five. Uh, you can do opposite, so you can start at a thousand, keep your way up to zero, subtract your way down. That's another common thing. So for loops are very useful, but they're kind of hard to understand. And in reality, we could do the exact same thing with a while loop. So here's an example, maybe where I won't be dumb with while. Um, so what you do is you start x. This is the exact same thing doing it, just with a, uh, a while loop. You could do while x is this, and then you put the last statement at the bottom. This is a, what a for loop does under the hood, essentially. If I were to take this and comment this above part out, this is a for loop as a while loop. Yep, and there's you, there's your result there. So. Uh, other flow control structures, can I think of any? Um, no, can't. I'm almost out of time anyway. Um, those are those are the most flow control. Oh yeah, there's switch. Um, Thirty seconds to talk about switch. So the basic idea of switch is you switch on a value. It's got to be an integer type, and then you check to see the various types that it can be. Uh, typically, this is for cases where your numbers can only be a couple values. For example, like if x was some kind of mode, you would want to see which mode it was in. And then you would do different things based off of that mode. So for example, if x is 1, oh my god, I'm running out of time. This video is not going to upload to YouTube. I'm going to have to edit it. There. So there's a switch. I don't use switches that much because they're clunky. I usually use if instead just because it's cleaner to me. Um, so there you have the flow control structures and see the most common ones at least to control where a program goes. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you later.